This is the VR controller that I made in the last video. Today we're going to be taking a look at everything we need to do in order to make it work properly. The first half of this video we're going to be taking a look at how we're going to make it work visually, and the second half of the video we're going to be taking a look at how to make it more efficient for the computer so that when we use it, it's quick and snappy. I find that it's easier for me to explain things when they're visual, so last night I modeled myself a virtual workshop. This is where I'll explain exactly how this is all going to work. It's rather small, but over there on the wall is a Wii remote, and on the table is my controller. For the sake of this video, I'll blow them up for you. That's better. Now let's pick up the controller and see what we've got to work with. I gave a bunch of details about it in my last video about VR that you can check out right here. And in there I mentioned that we're going to be using IR LEDs. One change though, we're only going to be using two of them. One thing I didn't mention in my last video, however, is that this controller has room for a gyroscope. And you'll see why that's going to be very important in just a minute. The Wii Remote over here on the wall is going to be acting as our base station, but like I mentioned in my last video, it doesn't actually see the controller. It only sees two IR dots, and passes that information over to me in the form of X and Y coordinates. So in total, all we have to work with is two sets of X, Y coordinates and three angles from a gyroscope. Now you might be thinking, no way, there's no way you can track an object's 3D position and rotation with that little information. Or can you? These 2D points that the Wii Remote gives us can actually be much more useful than just 2D. Now this is a bit of a process, but after all the complex math, you can find a 3D coordinate inside of the Wii Remote that is the true center of the Wii Remote camera. Then you can cast a ray from the center, through the dot, out into the room. Now then, let's get back to the virtual workshop. If we do exactly what I just described in here, we get two lines that hit each IR light on the remote. Nice. A couple of problems though. We know the Wii Remote's points hit each of these lines, but that's all we know. If the controller is at a tight angle, it could be really close to the Wii Remote. Or if it's not, it could be really far away. Also, we don't know which line corresponds to each dot, so it could be completely upside down. This is why I said we need the gyroscope. If we read the gyroscope data before we do any line casting, then we get the exact rotation of the controller. Then we cast one line from the Wii Remote and lock one of the IR points on the controller to it. Now, we know that the controller is on this line somewhere, we just don't know where. But if we cast the second line, all we have to do is move the controller up and down the line until both points hit. Brilliant! But let's be honest, that'd be a lot for the computer to calculate for every single frame. So, part two of this video, how do we make it more efficient? First off, we only need to calculate the true center of the Wii Remote once. So that takes a lot off the computer for the rest of the frames. But really, the only other thing we need to optimize is moving the controller up and down the cast line. And this is a bit tricky, but bear with me. First thing we know, the distance between the IR LEDs is always constant. Next, we know that we have two lines that hit at one point. This means they have an angle. This means that the line between the controller's LEDs has to be somewhere within this area. Now, I know this is a lot to wrap your head around, but bear with me. The rotation of the controller is independent of the location of the Wii Remote. Let me say that again. The rotation of the controller is independent of the location of the Wii Remote. Now, let me explain. Let's say that what you see right now is what the Wii Remote sees. So, I have my controller and I power it on, but I'm facing this way when I power it on. So this is at zero position, it's facing this way. But the Wii Remote is right there not over here. Because the way that we did it is using casting lines and figuring out the angle between them in order to get how far it is from the Wii Remote, if this isn't zeroed facing the Wii Remote, then it's all going to be completely wrong. Because the angle between the two dots is going to be different when it's facing this way than if it's facing this way. Does that make sense? If not, please leave a question down in the comments below, I'd be more than happy to answer them. I know this took me a long time to actually wrap my head around. So if you do understand it, you know that if the controller is not synced perfectly when we start it up, then you're going to have a big problem. This is why it'd be good to have two base stations. If one base station sees this angle and another sees this angle, they're both going to see two dots, and those two dots are the same two dots on the controller. So that means that we can use those two XY coordinates and the cast lines that we make to triangulate this thing's position in 3D space. That means that as we're moving this around, even if the, we do shake it around and the gyroscope gets off, 
we'll be able to recalibrate the gyroscope every single time we slow down using both base stations. I know that sounds complicated, I'm sorry. Now you might be wondering, why would I explain how to do it with one base station when I know that it's better to do it with two? Simple answer is that it's more simple to do it with one, even if it might not work as well. I'm going to do it with one, see if this idea that I have even works at all, and then, if that does work, then we can take it to two base stations, make it more accurate, make it more precise, and then I can give all the cabin code away so that you guys can make your own. If you want to see more videos about projects that I do, there are going to be a couple links on the end screen. And guys, never be afraid to share your talents. I'm Michael, and I'll see you later.